If you are interested in minimalism, you probably are familiar with those two guys. They call themselves the minimalists, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. You probably also know this guy, Matt Diavella. He has been blowing up on YouTube over the last couple of years making videos about minimalism and by now has passed 3 million subscribers. But what a lot of people don't know about Matt Diavella is that he is a professional filmmaker. Five years ago in 2015 he made a documentary about minimalism following around the minimalists on their first nationwide tour. This documentary got a lot of publicity and it's still available on Netflix but now there's also a follow-up documentary called Less Is Now. It came out on January 1st, 2021. I already watched it and in this video I'm gonna tell you if it's worth for you to watch it as well. Now it is important to note here that the documentary actually was supposed to be done a long time ago. Matt Diavella went on the Minimalist podcast recently and there they talked about how it took four years to finish this project. I think that uh, this project was certainly unique in that uh, it has evolved so much mm. since the very beginning. Like I think the core structure of the film, like the message and everything that w really ended up becoming the film is still there. Um, but we had to kind of have a go at it two or three times before yeah. we really found it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that, I don't think we could have imagined it coming out as good as it did no. when we first oh started. No. And, I, and I think I'm just glad that we didn't settle because it would have been easy yep. to say, all right, this version is good enough. Let's just ship it. And I think that's difficult for any creative or any filmmaker to really know what the difference is and mm -hmm. how to not get stuck in perfectionism. But I think we found the right balance and we got the right feedback early on from the right people. Yeah. Um, and we also just trusted our gut to be able to yeah. say, all right, we need to keep working at this thing until it's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it took four years, but I'm glad it did. So right off the bat, I have to say that I'm honestly just relieved that they finally managed to finish this documentary and release it to all of us. And I think the timing really couldn't have been better because minimalism is more relevant than ever before. Especially now, during Corona times, which industries have been booming the most? That's right, e-commerce. Amazon stock is at an all-time high. Google, who essentially makes all their money from advertisement, is at an all-time high as well which just goes to show that people are buying more and are more receptive to advertisement than ever before. While being stuck at home, people want to buy even more. They want to find a way to feel good about themselves nonetheless. And the way they do it is that they purchase things that most likely they don't need. In times like this, I believe it is essential to promote lifestyles that offer alternatives to consumerism. And minimalism definitely can be such an alternative. As we dive into the documentary, it follows Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus and their life story. They are childhood friends, they grew up together and grew up in very similar circumstances. Both of them grew up rather poor and in troubled households. So from childhood on, they always had this feeling of inadequacy, feeling like they are not enough and then ventured on into their life trying to fix that. And for both, initially the answer to happiness seemed obvious. They focused on their career, on making more money and on buying more things. And they did so rather successfully, climbing the corporate ladder, getting promotions, making a six-figure income and indulging in consumerism. But lo and behold, as they reached the end of their 20s and they got all this stuff, they realized there was still something missing. They still felt empty inside. And I think that this is something that really hits close to home. It's something that a lot of people can resonate with. People who are trying to live the American dream, who have been brought up by advertisement and have been told again and again that the secret to happiness is owning more stuff. Of course, that's exactly what corporations want us to think because it's the secret to our economy. It's why people keep buying more things and why they never feel satisfied. A satisfied consumer is not a good consumer because he will stop buying. Instead we get put on what is called the hedonic treadmill. It's the idea that we constantly need to keep going in order to attain happiness which of course we will never reach and even if we do it will only be for a very brief moment of time until we have new cravings, new desires, new wishes that we want to fulfill. If you're interested in learning more about the hedonic treadmill, I made a video about it in the past and you can check it out right up here. So as our two minimalists slowly realized that they got caught up in a rat race, they tried to find solutions. And the solution that they found was minimalism, which worked amazingly well for them. 
They started decluttering their houses, decluttering their lives, and in the process learning that you can be happier by having less. I think it's important to point out here how much of a paradigm shift that really is. For somebody who thought their entire lives that money will make them happy, owning things will make them happy, having more will automatically lead to more happiness, thinking that getting rid of things and minimalizing their lives will increase their happiness really must have been hard to accept. Basically you're admitting that everything you thought was true is false. And there are some scenes in this documentary that work out this thought process really well. It actually reminded me of my favorite movie of all times, which is Fight Club. There's a scene where Tyler Durden says, you are not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. You're not the car you drive. You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your car keys. I believe that this is a good premise to live by and there's definitely a lot of overlap with the minimalist philosophy. The minimalists eventually quit their jobs, started a blog and started reaching more and more people with their ideas. Nowadays they reach millions and with this documentary it will become even more. So to me that is really cool to see. It's cool to see that there is genuine interest in alternatives to consumerism and capitalism. As you know if you've subscribed to my channel here I talk about maximizing your happiness in life and if you haven't subscribed yet go do it now. So to see that there are like-minded people who are on the same quest as I am is truly amazing. Now that being said, I do think there are a couple of things that could have still been improved with this documentary. And the first one really is that it's surprisingly short. The whole documentary is just 53 minutes. I would have liked to see them turn it into a 90 minute documentary. I think the topic deserved that, the audience deserved that and there's clearly enough to talk about to fill 90 minutes. For example, the minimalists talk about how minimalism made them happier but they never clearly point out in what ways. What I would have liked to see is that they really go more into detail about that. How minimalistic are they really living now? Do they apply minimalism to every part of their life or only to the things they own? Do they find that minimalism should also be applied to relationships, both with your friends and your family? Those are questions that don't really get covered in the documentary and I think that's a pity. I also think that there was quite a lot of focus on those two guys, the minimalists, when there is a much broader movement here that could have been covered as a whole. You could have used this documentary to talk about the wider implications of minimalism. Is this even a concept that could work on a broad scale or would it basically crash our entire economy because we depend so much on consumerism? Would the fact that we as individuals become happier by owning less be countered by the fact that we as a society become less happy by having less output, less productivity and overall less personal income? If we all suddenly decided to become minimalists, would that lead to millions of people going unemployed because their companies are just not selling as much anymore? I think all of those are really relevant questions that need to be addressed and this would have been the perfect time to address them. But that being said, I do love that minimalism is being promoted at all and that thanks to Netflix it can reach such a wide audience. Seriously, think about how difficult it would have been to create a community around an idea like minimalism 20 years ago. It most likely never would have made it onto mainstream TV, so the only way to reach a wider audience would have been to write a book, which then very few people around the world would actually go and read. Nowadays, however, you have YouTube and you can promote even obscure ideas like minimalism to millions of people. If you then get a powerful partner like Netflix on board as well, you can reach tens and maybe hundreds of millions of people. So I definitely recommend you checking out this documentary. It promotes underdog ideas that get more and more exposure these days and could serve as a potential solution to more happiness on an individual level as well as more sustainability and less consumerism on a global scale. To find a way to be happy with who you are and what you have right now is one of the most crucial components to lifelong happiness and minimalism can be one strategy to reaching that. The documentary in the end even puts out a challenge to all its viewers to try to get rid of things every single day for 30 days. And I'm gonna accept that challenge happily and make a video about it. So if you're interested in seeing the results of that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video when I post it. Let me know in the comments below if you are taking the challenge as well, if you like the documentary Less Is Now and how minimalism has changed your life. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.